Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to Ditch Auto. My name's Jared and today we're taking a look at the top five photo related settings that you should change on your DJI Phantom 4 or Phantom 4 Pro. And to be honest, these settings work for the majority of the Phantom drones, uh, the Phantom 3, the, uh, the Mavic, and the DJI Inspire 1 and 2. So the reason that I'm doing this video is because, you know, when you're flying your drone and you're wanting to take pictures and, you know, you're in automatic, you're just using it the way it comes out of the box, you're not really going to get the best pictures. And you're going to get some pretty decent pictures because DJI does a great job uh, with what they've built here and, uh, and having it work well when it's up in the sky. But if you truly want to take control over the photography that you're going to be able to get out of this drone, there's a couple things you need to do. So there's five settings that I typically go in and make adjustments to, and we're gonna talk about those, uh, but I also use manual mode. Now, when you are in your camera settings here, you have automatic mode, aperture priority, shutter priority, and manual mode. And when you're in automatic mode and you're flying around, your camera is automatically changing its exposure, automatically making adjustments on the fly, which is good because that helps and if you're still a new you're still new to flying you should most likely be I mean I would even recommend that you would focus more on your flying and less on the camera settings because you know if you're flying your drone and you're messing with camera settings it's definitely dividing your attention and so you want to be safe when you're flying um, so I made a video about using manual settings on your DJI Phantom 4 uh, and that video works well for the majority of the DJI drones. So I'll link that in the description below and then at the end of this video as well. So let's talk about uh, the settings that I go in and change. Now you're going to want to make sure that you are in photo mode and that means um, tapping on the icon that switches between the two different options. If you have a red shutter button, you're in video mode. If you have a white shutter button, you are in photo mode. So the first thing that I'm gonna do, of course, is go in and make sure that I am shooting in both RAW and JPEG. So this camera on here has the ability to shoot in camera RAW, which is great because camera RAW images have much more detail, much more dynamic range and much more information for you to work with when you want to go and edit that photo. So whether you decide to edit that photo on uh, your tablet or your phone, or you want to move that photo over to your computer and edit it in Adobe Lightroom or Adobe Photoshop, the RAW file is going to give you a ton more information to work with than the compressed JPEG. Now the reason that I shoot with both RAW plus JPEG is so that if I want to do a quick transfer of an image uh, from the tablet to my phone, or if I want to take the image that is automatically captured in the JPEG version, I can edit that right away. Now, typically, and this will change over time, not all devices support raw images, like the editing of raw images, or even support raw images, like the viewing of raw images. So if you if all you have is the raw image, you're not going to have the ability to edit it unless you connect a cable to your device, you take the SD card out and use an adapter of some sort to copy it over. Uh, the copying over of the raw image typically isn't supported wirelessly on the majority of devices. So I shoot raw plus JPEG. So I have the JPEGs in case there's an image that I wanna use right away, share on social media or do anything like that. And then I have the raw images so that I can go back and edit those later um, in Adobe Lightroom or something like that. So to get to that settings, you're gonna tap on the little camera icon here and make sure that we're under photo and then under image format, you can see there's raw, JPEG, and JPEG plus raw. Now, essentially that's creating two files. Every time you take a picture, it's creating a raw image and a JPEG, the same exact image, just processed differently. The raw image is raw out of the camera, saved as a DNG format, and then the, um, the JPEG is obviously compressed and converted into a JPEG, uh, which is definitely more readily usable, but doesn't have as much dynamic range and information there so that you can make edits to it. So those really dark areas that end up in your photo, if you have the JPEG, there isn't as much information there to increase exposure in that area. And the really bright areas, there isn't as much information there to decrease exposure 
uh, and bring a little bit of detail back in that area. So I choose JPEG plus RAW. We've got ginormous SD cards in our, our drone and our cameras these days, so it's not going to eat up a ton of memory shooting both of those files. It's definitely not a problem for me. So the first thing I do is shoot JPEG plus RAW so that I have that option. The second thing that I do, and this is more when I'm out and, uh, and getting ready to shoot, depending on the atmosphere, how bright it is, whether I'm gonna be in the shade or in the sun, I will choose and change the white balance. I don't leave it on auto, and the reason being is that as you're flying around, you know, you may take a picture and your the sun is a little bit more uh, in front of your drone and then you may turn and the sun's a little bit more in back. Maybe the clouds come over just a little bit and change the overall lighting and exposure. But what that's also, the camera also is doing is changing the white balance. And the white balance is important because, you know, when you're looking at all the photos that you took, your photos are gonna be different color temperatures because as you move the drone around, and take pictures of different things, the white balance is gonna be changing because it's automatic, it's set to automatic. Now, if you're shooting in raw, like we discussed in the last step, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to color correct, a lot easier for you to change that white balance in Adobe Lightroom or Adobe Photoshop or whatever application you're using, but that's time consuming. It takes time to go and, and you know change those and normalize them and make them the same all the way across the board. I know right away when I import all of my photos and I look at them and I could just see the color difference in the photos and I think, ah, I forgot to take it out of auto white balance and I left it in something else. Now the majority of the time, cloudy, I'll use cloudy as the white balance option uh, because you know, uh, on, on a warm day, it provides a little bit cooler of an image that's not so cool that everything looks blue. Um, and on, uh, on cloudy days, it's a nice mixture. You know, if there's a little bit of clouds up in the sky kind of blocking some of the warmth of the sun and it's not uh, kind of a warm yellowish feel warm day, um, then, you know, cloudy tends to work pretty good. Uh, you know, there's incandescent and neon, but those are indoor uh, type of lighting that we have around us. Um, and, you know, it's, I just, I don't recommend flying a drone indoors unless you're a professional. Um, so I'm typically bouncing between cloudy and sunny. Uh, you know, cloudy tends to uh, warm things up a little bit. Sunny tends to cool them down a little bit. But what it's doing is it's giving a, an exact color temperature to your drone and it's not wavering from that. So your photos and everything are gonna be the same. This is even more so important when you're shooting video uh, that because as you move around, you know, the white balance is gonna change and the color temperature of your video is gonna change as you move around. So super important. So we'll go ahead and set our white balance and we'll just go ahead and leave our white balance as one of those. Um, now another thing that is, uh, that is a feature of the camera here is the style. And what the style does is it, uh, it applies a level of sharpening, contrast, and uh, uh, some, some different adjustments to your image. That could be a good thing. All cameras do this. They have the ability to adjust the, the sharpening, the contrast, um, and kind of the color vibrance, I think, is what the other one is. And um, it, it allows the adjustment of this. And especially when you're dealing with little camera sensors like these, and even though in the Phantom 4 Pro it's a bigger camera sensor, it's still a glorified phone sensor, just like what's in your phone. It's uh, a raw sensor. It doesn't have, it's not a DSLR camera with a lens and an aperture and a, a you know, a really good shutter. These are getting really good, but they're still not as good as a pro level camera or what would come on the DJI Inspire 1 or 2. So there's compensation that typically is done and a lot of times it's done in software. So what I typically do here is uh, I'm under standard mode um, and I make some adjustments, um, you know, which, which takes me down into custom and allows me to adjust, you know, the sharpening, the contrast and all this stuff. And I want a flatter image out of this because what's happening if you let your camera add in contrast is it's crushing the brightness and the darkness values. It's bringing those in to add more contrast to the image in camera. And 
You know, of course you can make changes to this with the raw file because we're saving the raw file, but I also have that JPEG that I wanna be able to use. That JPEG file is typically something I wanna share on social media pretty quick. I wanna take it into Snapseed on my phone or my tablet and edit it real quick, or maybe Lightroom Mobile, and I don't wanna have things done to that image. Uh, and you know, sharpness, this camera tends to really sharpen things, so the first thing I do is decrease sharpening uh, down to negative three. The next thing I do is come over to contrast, and usually I will play with that. Um, sometimes I'll go negative one, sometimes I'll leave it at zero so that it's not really doing anything. Um, and then also in, uh, in the last option here, sometimes I will go down one or two just to kind of flatten the, uh, the, the image out a little bit so that the color isn't so vibrant because I wanna be able to choose in post-production how vibrant I want the colors to be in this image. And if the camera has already done that, it's not as easy to back that out or to add to it without making the image look a little fake. Now, this is much harder to do in video because video is not as easy to color correct. Um, when we're shooting with the raw files, it's much, we have much more room to make changes because of that dynamic range and the raw file um, just being a much more flexible image. But like I said, with the JPEGs, I typically go in and I take out some of this processing that's happening in the camera. So that way, when I do wanna use the JPEGs, uh, I don't have over-processed JPEGs straight out of the camera. Now the next change that I make is going into color. And there are some different color options like True Color, decena like D-Log. Um, I mean, there's lots of different color options that are in here that apply different color profiles to your image. Um, now, some of these are more, you know, the color profiles are typically more video. Uh, you know, you think of when you're shooting video, shooting in, in log is like a flat image, which is uh, giving you kind of a, an image that just doesn't have a whole lot of contrast. And this coincides with what we've already been talking about, about having an image that's not over-processed so that we can add in our own style. And you know, if you look on Instagram and you look just on the internet these days, people are defining their photography by the look of the image, by the, the wash that they put on the image or the style or the filter or something like that. Um, you know, hopefully it's more in depth than just applying a filter, but you know, having a really contrasty look or having maybe one where it's a slightly desaturated look. I mean, a lot of people are differentiating themselves by making their photos look similar uh, in, the, in the effect that they put on the images. And it's so much easier to do this when you have a flat image to start with than it is to apply all of this stuff at the camera level. And so typically what I do not only when I'm shooting in photo, but when I'm shooting in video, is go with a flatter picture style. And uh, I found, I think, that d -cine -like, uh typically is a little bit better. D-Log is extremely flat, which is fine, um, but d -cine -like seems to be pretty good. It's one that works well for me when I'm shooting photos or video with the drone. And so depending on what mode I'm in, I would go and make those adjustments uh, so that I'm shooting a more flatter image and then I can go and make my changes. You know, these days I have, uh, I have settings that I could apply just one click in Adobe Lightroom because I have my typical style. I set up my camera so I'm getting a pretty consistent image out of my camera all the time. I load those images into Lightroom and all I have to do is click on one of the, uh, the settings, the presets that I've already created and it applies it and I know that I'm gonna have a consistent look across my images because I have them coming out of the camera the same way almost all the time and then I can apply the settings and it gives them that consistent look. So that's why we're doing all of this right now by going in and making these changes. All right, so the last thing that I do to my camera settings is I go into the actual settings menu. Now, the settings menu has features for both photo and video, and I make a couple of changes. Now, when you're flying, it's hard to pay attention to what the camera's doing. You know, you're trying to pay attention to where you're going, you're trying to line up your shot, you don't wanna hit something, you don't wanna get too close to something, so you have a lot going on in your mind, and composition is challenging. It's hard to frame up a shot. It's hard to get a photo that looks good in camera. And if you look at a lot of people's drone photos, they look awkward because they're trying to fly a drone and they're not super good at it yet, 
but they also are trying to take a decent picture. So using some assistant tools that the camera has here uh, that are built into the app definitely help. And we're gonna turn a couple of these on. The first thing I do is turn on histogram. The histogram pops up in, the, uh, in a small little window down there and you can kind of drag it around and position it somewhere. Um, the, what the histogram does is it gives you the brightness values across the spectrum so that you know if there are areas in your image that are too dark or areas in your image that are too bright. Now, typically you can kind of see that by just looking at the image, but when you're flying around and things are changing because you're pointing your camera in different ways or maybe the sun pops out from behind a cloud, sometimes it's just easier to look at the histogram. And if everything is mashed up against the side or one of the other sides, then you know that you have some problems there with your exposure and you can make those adjustments really quickly and easily. And those exposure adjustments I go over in the, uh, in the shooting manual um, video that I put up on this channel, so make sure to check that out. But the histogram really helps. Another thing that helps out is turning on a grid, uh, such as grid lines, which puts the rule of third grids on your screen. Now, when you're trying to frame up a shot, there are uh, you know, just typical ways that you can make an image look just a little bit more appealing, and that's typical, typically by putting your point of interest along one of the intersecting lines um, in the rule of thirds. And there's a lot uh, that can be said about the rule of thirds and the different ways to use the rule of thirds, but having those uh, on there definitely make it easier to line things up because otherwise you're trying to make fine movements and you're trying to figure it all out um, while you're flying and it is uh, typically a bit more challenging. So I always turn on the grid lines because it just makes it much easier for me to, uh, to line up my shot, to compose my shot and still be flying a drone and not worrying about too much at the same time. So that's gonna do it about the, uh, the camera settings. I typically go in and change. Now I am ready to go out and fly and take some pictures. Um, make sure to check out the video uh, that we're gonna put out on the top five video settings that you should change. A lot of it is very similar to the photo settings, but we're gonna talk about it in the context of video. Now one bonus is that every time I put my SD card back into the drone, the micro SD card, I always format it from within the, the, uh, the app here. I don't format it on my computer. I don't format it while it's in a GoPro or something else. I format it right from within this unit here. And that's important because, uh, you know, though they use similar formatting and, uh, you know, processes, I've just found I've never had any problems with SD cards failing while I'm flying, giving me errors or anything like that when I format before I fly. So as the last tip from this video, format before you fly, but make sure you do back up your card first because formatting erases your card and it's a pain in the butt to get stuff back after that. So hey, thanks so much for checking out this video. I hope that you learned a few things about the camera settings for photography on your Phantom 4, Phantom 4 Pro, or any other DJI drone that you have that's a modern one. Um, if you have any questions, please ask them in the comment section below. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you get notified when new videos come out. We're gonna be doing a lot of stuff with the Phantom 4 and other drones here as well, so we hope to have you along. Thumbs up if this video is useful to you, and thank you so much for joining us here on Ditch Auto today. We hope to see you back soon.